Hey guys, um, this is Kim, aka K Rants, and thought I would get on here this morning to talk about uh, my frustrations with being chronically ill or having a rheumatic disease. I have scleroderma, as so many of you may know, and I think for the most part I've been fairly positive, but I mean, this I guess was just a rough week. So, the only thing I can think to do is just get on here and share, you know, my frustrations. Um, it's hard to be ill and to kind of just have the, like, rug ripped from underneath you. I mean, your whole life changes. And, I mean, I'm thankful. I don't want to get on here and sound like a Debbie Downer or a complainer. Um, I'm very thankful that, you know, my disease is not as aggressive as what I know many others are. But, I mean, you know, quality of life is so important to me. And it's just, I really have had to adjust to a new normal. And it seems like sometimes that normal changes every day or every week or month because there's a new symptom or, you know, there's a medicine change or, you know, increase or decrease in a dosage. And, you know, that just affects your body in so many different ways. I mean, you can't even begin to really just comprehend or understand just all of the psychological effects that having a chronic diagnosis or illness um, has on you. So I just wanted to get on here and just talk about, like, really, I guess, my past week. So it was recently brought to my attention from a very good friend um, that... It just seems like I'm not approachable, you know, that maybe I'm not, um, I guess, inviting. And I was, I guess, emotionally, like, offended. But, I mean, there was a lot of merit to it. I, I mean, I think for the last year, I've just been going through a lot emotionally. You know, like, when I first got my diagnosis, I was really, really, really just like bedridden. I was extremely fatigued. I had so much inflammation in my body and I really thought I was gonna die. I mean, I thought about, okay, you know, I'm not ready to die. You know, I'm only, you know, 32. Uh, what's gonna happen to my son? And it was just like all these things. And I mean, granted, you don't know how aggressive or what type of disease you have because originally they told me I had lupus. And so of course, following up with a rheumatologist, that's when, you know, she was like, no, it's more mixed connective tissue disorder and, <clears throat> excuse me, scleroderma. So I guess that was better than the lupus, but still, you know, your mind is already kind of like, oh my God, I have something that's non-curable. And so who wants to be told that they have something that will never go away, you know, that science and medicine has not found a cure for, you know, your body's attacking itself and it's just depressing. And so... Then, too, you know, for me, my mom had autoimmunity. Uh, she had polymyositis and a host of other, you know, autoimmune diseases. And so then there's like this anger, this resentment, this anxiety that I had built up just because it's like, you know, I got shitty genes. And I'm sorry for cussing, but I just was angry I was angry with my mom and it was even worse because she passed away in 2003 so it's not like I could have a conversation with her so I'm, I'm really in this all alone and then you have friends and family who as supportive as I guess they may want to be or try to be you know sometimes it's not enough you know depending on where you're at mentally and emotionally you don't want pity you know like you don't want people feeling sorry for you you know I've just tried so hard to appear as normal and seem as normal as I possibly can and you know I'm not you know it, I, I wear my emotions on my face and I'm extremely sensitive you know self-image self-worth has kind of just depleted because with my illness it just attacks your skin and I mean, it looks like you just have these rashes and this burnt, charred skin. And I mean, and I'm a woman at that. So image and appearance, you want to look your best. You want to feel your best. And you just don't like you feel like crap. And so 
I don't know. I'm not saying, again, that I'm not thankful, that I'm not grateful for my doctors and for the small support system that I do have, but I really don't think it's something that people even within my support group understand unless you're really going through it. And I mean, I try to be positive. And I guess for me, I just was hurt because I do feel like I try to be as positive as I can be. But I guess, you know, just dealing with this, it, it is a stressful thing to deal with. And I mean, we all know that stress and the effect of stress on your body and your mental state, it can wreak havoc. And so, I mean, I, I guess maybe I've just been under a, a state of stress for so long and, and maybe it's like, you know, I'm dealing with this illness and I'm just, I want to get better. I'm trying to get better. You know, doctors keep telling me, oh, well, in order for you to improve your range of motion, you got to exercise. And that's like a catch 22 because, you know, lifting and moving your arms because literally this overproduction of collagen is hardening all of the connective tissue in my body. It's just, it's hellish. It's painful. And then, you know, you've got some people who, you know, make jokes at your expense and they think that you're being lazy. Because, I mean, I look normal, but I'm in pain a lot of the times. And, I mean, even with the medication, yes, there are improvements, but the improvement is definitely not where I can just get out here and go out and have a great time. I mean, I used to, you know, obviously, like, you know, socially, I was a social drinker. You know, you go out with friends for a happy hour or something. Well, I'm at the truck set. You can't drink alcohol because, you know, it will damage your liver or cause, like, liver cirrhosis. So, I mean, I went on vacation, and, I mean, I had enjoyed myself, but that was extremely hard. I mean, you normally go on vacation. You have margaritas. You sit on the beach. You have a good time. You drink wine, cocktails. I can't do any of that. And so, I mean, you just, it's, it's, you just have a new normal that you have to adjust to. And so I'm not in a place, I guess, right now where I've developed these new coping skills that I need to kind of be more positive. Um, so I'm definitely open to suggestions. I think I'm trying. Um, I, I look at this as an outlet. I mean, I want to talk about, you know, autoimmune illness and chronic illness, rheumatic diseases amongst, you know, just women and women of color specifically. Um, and I want to, you know, talk about, you know, just what are your symptoms? What's your diagnosis? But we should also talk about, like, how do you deal with or cope with and may have, what, what kind of adjustments have you made um, since you got your diagnosis? Because that's something I think that we don't talk about either. And I don't know. I just I don't want to cry on you guys. I'll, I'll end the video before I do that. But it's really hard to sit here and just you feel judged because you're judging yourself first and you feel bad because you know it's like why did this happen to me what did I do and I mean those questions you know are unanswered and we have to get to a place where we accept our diagnosis regardless of the prognosis and the course of the disease you know, regardless of, you know, if medicine helps or does not. Again, like I said, I'm very thankful and grateful that I don't have an aggressive form or that, you know, I've I've done things like change my diet and stuff like that to help with like my symptoms and stuff. But it's still extremely hard. And I just really don't think that people understand those who are not living in your body, walking in your shoes. It's very difficult for them to understand. Like, I'll tell you, um, one time I was at work and my office is either hot, hot, hot or cold, cold. Like you, it's no comfortable temperature. So at any rate, we had um, this like office heater. And so I normally get it because I have Raynaud's, which, you know, it just basically causes like my fingers and my toes and everything to get cold extremely fast because I think it's got something to do with like my blood vessels. Um, and they're not like dilated properly. So I don't have proper blood flow. So my hands get cold really fast. So anyways, I'm always cold and I got the heater and, you know, me just being honorary, I kind of got down on the floor to like um, plug it up. Well, I really shouldn't have done that. So I ended up like falling over the heater and I was like stuck on the floor and I'm at work. So luckily, 
um, one of my other colleagues, he's got like an office right next to me. And I sat there maybe for like five or 10 minutes just trying to be like, I can do this. But I have no arm muscle strength. Like, I just don't have any. It doesn't exist right now. And so I just sat there. I was frustrated. And I got myself, I worked myself up to where I was about to start crying. And I just had to realize, like, okay, you're going to have to say something. You're going to need help. Because I don't just walk around telling people, hi. You know, my name is Kim. I have scleroderma. And so... He was very nice about it because he was about to leave. So if I didn't say anything, he was about to go out in the field. I would have probably been stuck on the floor for God knows how long until he got back. So at any rate, I just, you know, I had to ask him, you know, I had to put my pride aside. And I said, hey, you know, can you come help me? He's like, what's wrong? He was like, you fell. And so I told him about, you know, my illness. And he was, you know, cool about everything. He helped me get up off the floor. But it's just to say, like, those are the types of things that I think mentally and emotionally, it's like, I should not have had to do that. But, you know, again, that's a part of the new normal. You can't walk. You can't, you know, people are wondering, why is she walking so slow? Or why does it seem like, you know, you're taking forever to get up the stairs? My joints, my muscles hurt. They are in a constant state of pain. And I mean, I don't feel like I should have to explain that, but sometimes it just pisses me off because it's like, I'm not bull crapping you, you know? But anyway, um, I'm sorry if that sounded negative or if that was negative or this whole video has been kind of like me complaining, but I, I just wanted to get it out. Like, I want to be more positive. I want to be happy. I want to be normal. But, I mean, this disease is really just, it's a humdinger. Um, so, um, I guess a real quick update. I am currently going to a uh, GI doctor because I went back for a follow-up because I started methotrexate. I think I've been on it now for about six weeks. So, um, my rheumatologist, uh, she after I finished like that first dose of four pills, she upped my dosage, so now I'm taking six pills every week, which I think is like the equivalent of 17.5 milligrams. Um, I haven't had any um, horrible side effects, thankfully, knock on wood. Um, so I'm thankful about that. I take that every Friday, and then I still take my folic acid one milligram or MCG every day. Um, and she upped my dosage to six. And so when I do take uh, the medicine, I take it at night and with a lot of water because it really does just make me just like feel like blah. Um, so I would rather just kind of sleep through whatever symptoms or not sy symptoms, but side effects, I guess, that I would have from the medicine. And so um, anyway, when I went, uh, I was telling her that I was having, <clears throat> excuse me, chest pain. And so I was asking her if, you know, methotrexate caused chest pain. And she was like, well, no, you know, that's not really a side effect. And so she had kind of, we had discussed previously about me having a possible acid reflux. And I do have some acid reflux or what I guess I would call it, you know, like the regurgitation or foaminess. Um, and even prior, like last year before I got my diagnosis, I recognized that like eating certain foods, it just felt like it would get stuck and it took a lot for it to, you know, go down. Anyways, so she referred me to a GI doctor um, and I went and saw him on Friday. So now they're going to like refer me out and I'm going to have an endoscopy done essentially to see like, I guess if I have dysphagia or how bad it is, which is basically like difficulty swallowing liquids and foods. Um, and then of course to see, you know, how bad my acid reflux is. In the meantime, they've put me on protonics. And so I take one of those a day. And he told me, of course, the main thing, obviously, is you have to just be mindful of the foods that you eat. Because certain foods will cause you to have reflux or inflammation, whatever. And so um, that's, I guess, something new, but not really. But it's just like, you know, good grief. You know, I'm going through all this other stuff, but whatever. I'm not really complaining about it. It's just an update. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to get on here and talk to you guys about how I was feeling. And I'm just hopeful 
that things are going to